Thanks for tuning in to strategy number three in an effective way to support your immune system. I've actually broken strategy number three into part A and part B. So we'll do part A first, and then I hope you'll tune in for part B. Strategy number three, eat more plants. So that seems simple on the surface, but most Americans focus their diet on animal protein. That's how they start planning their meals, and it takes up the majority of the plate. But instead, I want you to think about how can you eat a greater variety of plant foods. First of all, we're gonna look at vegetables. And vegetables come in five color groups, dark green, orange, red, purple, and pale. And each of these color groups provides specific nutrients that help support the immune system. I'm gonna cover each one of these, but I want you to remember this, strive for five. That's five servings of non-starchy vegetables every day. And if you can do it in a wide variety of colors, then you will do an even better job of supporting your immune system. So dark green, you can see some of the nutrients of notes found in this group, but every single one of the greens has different reasons to recommend them. So I encourage you to have a variety of green in your diet. Don't just decide you're only gonna eat spinach or kale because somebody told you those were super greens. And while they're really great, if you leave out things like asparagus and broccoli, you may come up short on folate. And there are just so many different things that you need in your diet, and you don't need to know what they are, but you just need to eat a wide variety. The orange color group actually gets its color from its primary antioxidant, and that's beta carotene. And it's a marvelous antioxidant on its own. It helps pr protect us from a wide variety of age-related diseases, but it's unique because in the liver, it is converted to a vitamin, and that is vitamin A, a vitamin that is vital to the immune system. So in, I encourage you to eat more things that are orange or deep yellow in color. There's things like carrots, sweet potatoes, any variety of winter squash, anything that is yellow or, or orange, and some of the yellow includes sweet corn. The red group gets its color from an antioxidant known as lycopene, another very powerful antioxidant. It, it does a fabulous job of warding off viruses as shown by how it helps support men's prostate health um, against prostate cancer. And it also helps support bone health. And there are not very many foods that contain lyco lycopene. Three of them are shown on the slide. They are tomatoes, ruby red grapefruit, and watermelon. And there's a couple more fruits, guava and papaya. So the easiest one to get into your diet, I think, is tomatoes, because when they are cooked and pureed, the, the lycopene is better absorbed than when it, the tomato is eaten raw. So feel free to have some healthy marinara sauce, because it's automatically going to contain some healthy fat to help you absorb the lycopene. The next color group I usually refer to as purple, but it's actually a range of colors that begins with red, transitions to blue and purple, and then all the way to a color we perceive as black. So you have red berries, blueberries, blackberries, red grapes, purple grapes, black grapes, and they all contain an antioxidant known as anthocyanin. It is very, very powerful at warding off age-related diseases. But anthocyanin is a member of a group of antioxidant known as flavonoids. And there was a study done in 2016 on flavonoid intake, and they found that people who took more flavonoids into their diet from foods had better lung health. So let's focus 
on getting at least one or two servings out of this group a day. You could do one vegetable and one fruit if you like. So in the vegetables, we've got red cabbage, red onions, red bell pepper. We also have things like the purple carrot, eggplant, purple Peruvian potatoes and sweet potatoes. So there's lots of ways to get this group in as vegetables. And of course, the fruits, we all love the berries. And in any color, berry is going to be great. But blueberries are really, really rich in anthocyanin. Though our fifth color group is actually pale, it doesn't have an intensity of color. It includes tan and beige and white. There's lots of different things that fit into this category. But I want to bring out your attention to two. One is mushrooms, and they did a study with people where they randomly divided them into two groups. They gave them all the same heart-healthy anti-inflammatory diet, but one group also had an additional serving of mushrooms a day, and that group showed better responses to their immune system than the group without the mushrooms. Now, particularly antiviral are the Asian mushrooms, like the shiitake, oyster, china cap. There's dozens of Asian mushrooms that you can cook and use in a variety of ways. So be sure you include some mushrooms as part of your vegetable serving, even though they're fungus. And then also don't think of onions as only being a seasoning. But onions, whether they are cooked or raw, are going to contain antiviral compounds. And when they are chopped and let to sit on the cutting board for 10 minutes or so, they form an antioxidant allicin that is um, actually antiviral. So include this group in your five servings a day. I'm going to close by reminding you that beans and legumes come in a rainbow of colors and that you should be sure to have a half a cup of cooked beans and legumes most days because they are nutritional powerhouses. This is a, one of our first groups I'm going to share with you that actually contains zinc, but they, because of their color pigments, they also contain different nutrients. Like black beans aren't black, they're purple. So you get a dose of anthocyanin when you enjoy that colorful bean. There are other examples, but I will leave it at that as we close this session. And I hope you'll come back and watch part B of strategy three.